The next topic that we're going to talk about in relation to quadratics is what's called complex numbers. So we, today we're going to learn about imaginary and complex numbers. We're going to start with a little bit of review. It may or may not be review for you. It says graph the equation y equals x squared plus 2x plus 4 in your calculator. How many real roots does this quadratic have? Okay, we haven't done graphing yet. I'm going to tell you what this equation would look like and we're going to talk through that. A y equals x squared quadratic is always going to be a parabola. So if we were to graph this parabola, it's going to look something like this. Now if we were to solve this equation, we're looking for when the equation is set equal to 0. So when the y value is 0. On our graph, the y value is equal to 0 is here. Now what you should notice is your parabola never hits that though. Your parabola never crosses 0. But, if we remember, x squared means we're going to have two solutions. So how can that be? We're going to have two solutions, but the graph never actually hits zero. Okay, well that's where we're going to introduce this idea of complex and imaginary numbers. So this graph, or this equation, does have two solutions, but they're imaginary. We can't actually see them. So imaginary units, numbers, use the imaginary unit i, which is defined as i squared is equal to negative 1. i squared equals negative 1. Therefore, i, well, if I take the square root, i is going to be the square root of negative 1. Okay, so we're going to talk about how this looks and then how we're going to use it. So in example number 1, we need to simplify the square root of negative 45. First thing I'm going to do is split this into negative 1 and 45. Now the square root of negative 1, like we just wrote above, is i. 45 now we need to break down. I'm going to use the pairs method. So I have a pair of 3's and a leftover 5. The 3, like normal, goes outside the root. The 5 that's left over goes underneath the root. And then we have this i. So that is our answer. Now this should make sense. You've been told before you can't have a negative underneath the square root. When you do, you get what's called an imaginary number. So if we look at the second example, or the second part of example 1, we have the square root of 6 times the square root of negative 15. We have two different options here. We could multiply the two and then start simplifying or we can simplify first. I'm going to multiply right now, and I get negative 90. So again, I'm going to pull out that negative 1, and then work on breaking down the 90. Again, I'm going to look for pairs. So in this case, I have a pair of 3's, so that 3 comes outside. That square root of 1 is just i, so that'll be i. The 2 and the 5 that are left over are going to give me 10 underneath the root. Okay, so this isn't too different than what we did before. You just need to remember, if you have a negative underneath the square root, that's going to give you an i. A few other things I need you to remember. So in terms of properties, we've talked about these, but I want to talk about them again. i is the square root of negative 1. That means i squared is just negative 1. So we're going to use those in example 2. Example 2, if I multiply these two numbers, I get negative 15i squared. Okay, i squared you're not allowed to leave. i squared is just negative 1. So this is really negative 15 times negative 1, which is 15. If we try this next example, we get 12i to the fourth. Well, we don't know what i to the fourth is, but I do know that i to the fourth is i squared times i squared. i squared I know is negative 1. So I get 12 times negative 1, which is negative 12, times negative 1 is positive 12. Okay, we got a few more things to talk about with imaginary numbers. 
If you could go to the next page, we're going to look at some operations. Before we look at operations, we're going to talk about a complex number. So an imaginary number has an I in it. A complex number has a real part and an imaginary. A complex number is written as A plus B I. That A is a real number. B is the imaginary part. So we're going to work on performing some operations with complex numbers. If you look at example 3, we have a complex number being added to another complex number. You're going to add the like parts. So real, real can be added to get 7. Imaginary, imaginary can be added. So negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3i. So you're just adding the parts that are alike. For the next example, be careful here. we got to think about what does it mean to square. Well, this is really 1 plus 2i times 1 plus 2i. You have a few different options. You can FOIL. What I like to do and I have been doing in the videos is the box method. So I get 1, 2i, 1, 2i. So this is 1, 2i, 2i. Be careful here for i squared. So combining like terms, I get 1 plus 4i plus 4i squared. Okay, now be careful here. i is fine. We can leave i. We can't leave i squared. So if you look above, a complex number does not have i squared in it. It has i, but not i squared. i squared, though, we know is negative 1. So this is really 1 plus 4i plus 4, and then replace that i squared with negative 1. So this gives us 1 plus 4i minus 4. Combining like terms, 1 and negative 4 is negative 3 plus 4i. That's our final answer. The part that students find the trickiest is remem remembering to place i squared with negative 1. you got to remember i squared is negative 1. You always have to replace it. Now we've gotten to the point where you're going to try some examples on your own. So you need to try these two. You're multiplying, like we just did, and you're subtracting. I'm going to tell you, or remind you for subtracting, you've got to distribute the negative. So try these two problems, and then turn your notes in. You will not get credit unless you have both problems done. If you have any questions, please write them down, or make sure to send me an email. Good luck.